Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the weekend update. We're going to start today's video with what has been causing all the issues in the market, and that is the 10 year bond yield. That is this chart right here, and it just continues to be a big issue for the market, really, because we've had a 70% move essentially in the last five weeks way too quick. That's why you've seen a lot of the money come out of tech stocks and out of small cap stocks, the speculative stocks, and flood into the boring cap, the large cap boring stocks like Home Depot, et cetera, et cetera. We've got a big week coming up this week. We've got uh, Fed Chairman Powell. He's speaking on Monday, and then on Tuesday and Wednesday, he's testifying in front of Congress. We've got some huge... Uh, treasury auctions we've got inflation data at the end of the week so this story is not going away anytime soon now this past week on Thursday we had the Fed come out and when it looked like we were gonna have a bounce in the market they came out and said that they were going to remove a condition where they let banks not count their treasury holdings against the safety rate that came into effect after 2008 and the market did not like that. But Friday morning, the Fed came out and they pumped $270 billion into the Treasury market. Lots of liquidity added. We did get a bounce back, but we ended up seeing more selling. But that is probably mostly because this past Friday was what they call triple witching. That's when options expire and futures expire all on the same day and it can be a very rigged market when that happens essentially what happens is the only people who make money in options most of the time are the people who actually write those options aka the brokers big money players etc and their goal whenever options expire is to have the they call it the max pain point to have the price go to a place where the most calls and the most puts expire negative and those guys walk away with their free money that's essentially what we saw in the market on friday looking here quickly at the dow really looking at the dow chart you can't tell what's going on the market because again a few boring large cap stocks in the 30 stock dow can impact how this looks the spy is actually more indicative of what we see going on here a uh, lot bigger moves as you can see we're still well above uh, the uptrend line and the same on the Qs. Now we did get that bounce back on the QQQ and this is really the sector we need to watch for the kinds of stocks we trade. When these stocks are bouncing, the rest of the market is bouncing. When 90% of the market is bouncing, you see the boring caps going up. Breakout, 325. But we do have the potential to going down and testing this 200 day moving average. And there's no chart that shows this better than Tesla, which is why we always have to keep an eye on what Tesla is. Tesla bounce, QQ bounces. Tesla's looks exactly like the Q's chart. Now it's gonna be interesting to see how they approach Tesla tomorrow morning. Some couple of big pieces of news out there. ARK finally came out with their price target for Tesla that they've been hinting at for the last uh, three, four weeks. $3,000 price target. Now, every time these guys have raised their price target on this stock, it's outperformed in the next few weeks. However, we also have this Chinese news out there where the military is not going to allow Tesla cars to be used by military. Whether that becomes a story or not depends on how much ammo the shorts and Tesla have. So this is going to be the stock that we're going to watch this week. You know, we can watch what happens in the bond yields, but I firmly believe this is really the only stock we need to watch. The way this stock moves is going to give us an indication of how the rest of the market moves. Now, on that point, again, we continue to see 90% of stocks track what is happening in the SPY and what's happening in Tesla. I have never, and you know, I'm getting up there, my memory's not like it used to be, but I never remember such a long period of time where 90% of the market tracked the movement in the spies. It's just really, really strange, really frustrating to be honest. And it just tells you the influence that these 
algo programs have in the market right now everything is tied to what happens in the large cap when you see a stock spike all of a sudden and you go man how did that happen that's because these algos are all over the place when we place buy and sell orders they go through the computers of these hedge funds before they hit the stock market so they can adapt and adjust we obviously now have programs that are directly tied into what the large caps do and they pull the bids out and they pull the stops down which is why i'm still sitting high cash with my pre-deal SPACs and cash i'm about 86 percent right now half position market emphasis really for me is on day trades and whatever the flavor of the day is i did add a couple of swing plays in the last few days but i'm you know swing plays are not what they were two months ago and i liken this market to what we saw back in august where we had a similar large cap sell-off most stocks got hit it was really not until late september october where we really started to see the action come back so we're about mid-september if i was to give you an idea where we are compared to what happened back in august um this time of the year is also aside from last year tends to be very slow march madness has historically been a slow period for most of the market so we've got another couple of weeks of this chop and then hopefully we should see things start to move stock plays ai yikes i couldn't have called a stock any worse than i've called this stock recently i finally threw my towel in on the swing position not on my long-term position but on my swing position and i'm watching it to get back in but until we see some stabilization in bonds the shorts are just going to go hog wild on these high pe growth stocks and that's just the position we're in now we did have a red red hot sector this week nfts have blown up blockchain bitcoin anything to do with that has blown up uh the, of course the big mover that started it all was tkat they actually came out with a press release after that thing and said we don't know why our stock is moving that is actually the best kind of press release you can have and you can see the stock responded likewise ocg another art stock with an online presence and and that's what is driving these early movers in nfts they are in the art world and nfts revolve around art on the blockchain so that is why you're starting to see these kinds of stocks move now whiskey was one that i was saying this was actually one that said in press releases in articles we are nft and of course no one listened because this is a market where ridiculous will move bigger than actual real stocks now whiskey had a huge move up to 1580 after that press release it has come down and flagged very very nicely so if we see a uh, movement on these stocks early this week uh break over 1150 ish on this one and we could be looking at a move back to 1314 again this is a real nft play now another one that is quotation marks a real nft play is lghl um, and they have partnered with a company that has press releases mentioning nft and they've actually purchased a position in this company a week or so ago per the sec filings nice little flag on this one here where will we see a breakout if we look at the daily chart daily chart here uh 460 50 60 is probably where you're going to see them come for that move to five to six plus here so that's what we're looking at there another favored one of mine um in that sector cscw became a blockchain play a week ago on its press release now this is the monthly chart we're looking at we haven't looked at many monthly charts recently just because of what's going on in the market so this is one of these rare charts that actually looks really really good if we flip over to the daily here nice slow move higher this stock is a caged beast between that 99 cent to 110 area and when we see that on these kinds of stocks when they are finally allowed to move they tend to pop quickly first target there would be 134 aiki this is another uh, play right at that breakout level now there's a lot of chatter about earnings out there these kinds of stocks don't have any meaningful earnings the way the reason you look for earnings reports on these kinds of stocks to see if the companies give any sort of insight 
not any revenues these are all pre-revenue companies we're looking for some insight here and probably a break over 140 could give a very very nice upward move on this near term last one i want to mention about hoff v now this had a huge pop on friday because the company came out and said yes we are aware of nfts and the stock went up 75 percent that's like a toilet paper company saying, yes, we are aware of the impact of bananas on a diet. Uh, okay, this stock moved up big. It has a history of big moves up and then dropping offerings. It's a maxim stock. So let's see if that was the reason why that news had the impact on this stock on Friday. Other stocks in this sector, MKGI, this stock, weird action late every day it seems a short comes in and pounds this stock down and then the next day this stock gaps up so let's see if this story repeats itself um tomorrow this stock has a lot going for it blockchain um and the big angle is they are a travel business too so there's lots of positive angles for this play here the last one in the sector i'm going to mention real quick is ccnc this is a day trade stock they have a 500 million dollar offering priced and sitting out there that could drop at any time but the way these stocks move and you can see here on this chart this stock likes to move nicely 560 break you could be looking at a move over six but again this is not a stock to hold a big swing position in nor is any stock for that matter in this market at least as far as i'm concerned i'm um, high cash and but this is one i would look at when i would see movement in some of these other stocks this might be one to look at the intraday chart and see if there's a trade in it Speaking of toilet paper, ITP, we're still waiting on that news here. We did get a positive MACD cross, so it's just a matter of waiting on that press release on this stock. ITech, now this is one of our pre-deal SPACs. They actually signed a really, really nice deal with a 4D autonomous car radar stock. And it's one of those, the cheaper valuation SPACs, only like $750 million valuation. You usually see multiple billion valuation on these. And the reason I bring that up is Mavis is pushing a 3 billion market cap and doesn't have what iTech has. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. Um, SPACs are out of vogue right now, but if we do see a big breakout in Tesla, you're going to see these kinds of stocks, i.e. iTech's kind of sector, go on a very nice move. INUV, quick mention on this one, it's actually starting to range again between the 110 ish area to 130. You recall it did a similar thing back in November and December before it went on a big move. So again, this is not an uncommon trading characteristic for this stock mergers we talked about neos last week going into the shareholder meeting boom hit target it actually went above the target this is why you have targets when your target hits you book your gains and you move on we have another one coming up this week seneca has their merger vote upcoming this week so we could be looking at a nice pop on this one into that merger date Last couple of stocks I'm going to mention, uh, UAMY, especially if the EV sector heats up or we ever get that press update, update from them, 146 break. If we look at the daily chart, you can see here, this is a nice, nice chart setup. We're getting stronger and stronger. It's just waiting for the right press release and the right volume for a very nice move up higher. And of course... Can't talk about Unami without talking about XPL, another one in the sector. So again, it's going to depend on what the EV stocks do, but if one moves, the other moves. So that's why we have to watch both of these stocks right now. So that's it for the video, guys. Uh, this upcoming week, I'm still sticking to my day trade focus, high cash, half positions, no rush into anything. You know, if trades don't show up, you don't do trades. Cash is a position and no trade is a strategy, especially in a tape like this. If you're having difficulties trading this kind of market we're in right now, hop on, check out. The, I've got a trading video on how to trade difficult markets. So it's worth a review, even with the dates and stocks being outdated on it. The theory and the strategies work in all kinds of markets. So that's it for the video. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you all in the chat room tomorrow. Bye.